You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you mounts to the gaming dragon today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of... My brain blanked out. Uh, Santa Lucia, Nate's Path. There we go. <clears throat> anyway, y'all, before we jump into it, I wanted to let y'all know that the Patreon is now up. We've got bronze, silver, and gold tiers, respectively. Five, ten, fifteen dollars a piece. All of them get access to exclusive rewards and permanent access to our community Discord server. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. <clears throat> All right. Phew! That's a relief. I head for the waiting area and take the seat furthest from everyone else. The pain is so excruciating that my skin is getting all clammy. At least I'm sitting in an air-conditioned room instead of outside. Ooh! I lean back in the chair. It's surprisingly comfy for what it is. I've definitely sat in worse waiting room- sorry, I've sat in worse waiting room chairs, like at the hospital. <clears throat> I let my head fall back and rest against the wall, then close my eyes. Ah, mm, mm, mm. It seems like it may take a bit. Might as well get some get some rest in. Bennett Rivers? <sighs> what? My ears twitch at the sound of my name, causing me to break from my half slumber. I blink a couple times when I realize I'm the only one left in the waiting area. We're ready to see you now. Uh, right, uh, okay. I get up slowly from the seat, careful to not instigate another dizzy spell, and follow the woman down the side down the side hall. Right in here. The doe holds open a door for me leading into a small doctor's office. Your nurse will be with you real soon. Thank you. No problem. When I'm fully in the room, the woman lets the door go. I watch as it slowly closes itself shut with a click. Hmm. The room must be somewhere in the middle of the building since there's no windows. I hear the fluorescent light hum above me. Shrugging my shoulders, I take the I take a single I take the single seat near the sink. They uh definitely got the atmosphere right. Feels exactly like a doctor's office. White sterile walls, that biohazard container near the door. The bed table thing even already has a sheet of paper covering it. I pull out my phone to pass the time. Looks like it's a little after three. Heh, <laughs> lab is over and I still haven't been treated. Maybe I could have handled staying a bit longer. I glance up when I hear a sound of the door opening. A fox woman wearing a light green outfit enters the room holding a folder. I think they call those outfits scrubs, right? Uh, Mr. Bennett, Mr. Bennett Rivers, correct? I stash my phone away in my pocket and focus my attention on her. Yeah, that's me. Perfect. She starts flipping through the folder and pulls out a sheet of paper. The report says you're suffering from a worse migraine than normal. Could you describe the symptoms? Uh, sure. I go down the list of everything I've been dealing with since lunch. Uh-huh, I see. Do you have a history of having migraines like these? I do, but they've never been this strong. All right. She scribbles on the sheet of paper. Do you have any previous medical conditions? Anything related to your head? Yeah, I do. I unconsciously start rubbing along the part of my skull that fractured from the fall. I, hmm. I wonder if I should tell her about the, my, the, about the nightmares. She might just send me to another psychologist. I've been having seizures ever since I fell out of a tree when I was in first grade. She looks up at me and nods her head. Were there any injuries as a result? Yeah, the doctor says I cracked my skull right here. I rub my fingers along my scalp to demonstrate. It seems to get her attention more as she walks closer. That's very bad, yeah. Are you on any medications for it? I shake my head. Not for several years, no. Do you remember what you were taking back then? Uh... No, I, I can't. My sister took care of all the paperwork and stuff. No problem, it should be in your medical history. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you describe your pain from the migraine right now? Seemingly on cue, a wave of misery emanates out from my skull. Ah! At least an 8? Maybe a 9? I rub my forehead. The nurse writes something else down on her sheet. And how about your injury? Does it still cause you pain? It does sometimes. I look up at her and see she's staring at me intently. Um, uh, most days it's about a one or a two. Occasionally, though, we'll have a bad nightmare, and I'll, when I wake up, it's closer to a five or a six. For a brief second, I notice her eyes widen before returning to normal. Did you say nightmares? Y yeah, is that bad? She hastily scribbles more down on her sheet before packing it away in the folder she brought. No. Where are you going? I can't hide my confusion when I realize she's already halfway out the door. I need to consult with the doctor. I'll be right back. Uh, okay? And just like that, the door clicks about closed behind her. That was strange. Never had a nurse act like that before. Shit, what I have isn't serious. What you probably have is something that other people have been experiencing and they're noticing a pattern. That wasn't a good sign. Second y'all, it is coffee time. Because my partner made some delicious coffee this morning. 
It's so good that you can drink it cold. I mean, it's not cold brew. It was meant to be warm, but it's cooled off now, so... It's still delicious. I sit staring at the wall for a bit before pulling out my phone again. Let's try looking up my symptoms online. Oh! I can make your symptoms worse. Floating grapes! Or whatever the hell. Cherry plums! Fuck! The phone drops out of my hand and crashes on the linoleum floor. I realize how bad my hands are shaking when I reach down to retrieve it. Oh! The jolt of pain I just had. That was a 10. Maybe an 11. What the fuck is wrong with me? My vision starts to sway and I notice I'm beginning to lose my hearing. I cut my ears to try and drown out the static, but it pierces through my eardrums. My brain feels like it's about to explode. Make it stop. Make it stop! I open my eyes and see the nurse has returned. She stands at the table with her back to me, filling out more paperwork. Uh, is there anything I can take right now for this? I feel like I'm gonna pass out. She turns around to face me. I scan her face before she talks. It's definitely the same woman, but something feels off. Her fur pattern looks a little different, and the wrinkles around her eyes don't fold the same way. Unfortunately, there isn't. And her voice is ever so slightly deeper. Creeps me out. Oh, okay. Damn. This headache is really messing with my senses, isn't it? After consulting with the doctor, we came to the conclusion that there's nothing to worry about. Because of your injury, you're more prone to seizures. What you're experiencing right now is most likely a simple focal seizure. Oh. <laughs> I rub the side of my head. What does that mean exactly? Your senses are going haywire, more or less. This tends to manifest in head pain, dizziness, altered senses, nausea, and bodily twitching. I see. I blink a few times. That sounds pretty accurate. What should I do, then? The woman finishes, fill fil finishes filling out the sheet she's working on and hands it to me. The doctor has prescribed you with some medicine that will help lessen the symptoms in the future. Oh? We have a pharmacy on campus down the other hall in the lobby. Take that slip with you down there and you can pick up your medicine. Thanks. Only take it as instructed on the bottle. One pill every 24 hours and only before going to bed. Got it. If the symptoms get worse, make sure to come back to the wellness center. Alright. She walks over to the door and holds it open for me. Have a good evening, Mr. Rivers. Stashing my phone in my pocket and slipping my backpack over my shoulders, I return to the building's lobby. Excuse me, which way is the pharmacy? The same doe sits at the reception table. It should be right over there. You can't miss it. Thanks. I follow the direction she pointed in, and sure enough, there's a small open room with rows and rows of medicine behind a long desk. I show the slip to the pharmacist and receive my bottle in a sealed bag with instructions stapled to it. I must have prepared it while I was talking to the nurse. He gives me a quick set of instructions, which I tune out because they're the same ones the nurse told me. God, couldn't give me anything help, anything to help in the right now, could they? My head still feels like it's caving in. <laughs> After stashing the medicine in my backpack, I'd ex exit out the front door of the wellness center. The temperature seems to have dropped substantially. It's almost kind of chilly. Wait a second. I step off the building's ramp and glance up at the sky. It's filled with stars. No, it can't be. That makes no sense. It was still midday when I entered the doctor's office. I look up and down the main path and notice the lamp posts are already turned on. What the hell? There's no way that took this took that long. I frantically dig out my phone from my pocket. It was around 3 p.m. when I checked last. Eh? Nothing but a black screen. It, it won't turn on. Is it? It's out of batteries? No, it can't be. I fully charged it before heading to class. Oh. I'm hit by another dizzy spell. This doesn't matter. I need to get back to the dorm. Second y'all. Coffee time. Damn, boy, what the fuck is wrong with you? Taking the path I usually go down, I end up in a place I recognize. Huh? Arcadia Field? But... No, it shouldn't be here. Jesus, did this headache make me lose track of where I'm going? I close my eyes and rub them with my fingers. And rub with my fingers. I'm feeling really uneasy right now. Guess I'll just cross the field. The dorms are over there, right? Yeah, of course they are. I trust my mental map of the school. It hasn't let me down yet. <laughs> I found myself in front of the psychology building. Wait, that doesn't make sense either. I look up at the building and see there's not a single light still on inside. Weird. Every time I've passed these places at night, there's still always been at least a hallway light on. I feel the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. There's something missing. I gulp down hard. Where is everybody? My eyes dart side to side. There's nobody around since I left the wellness center. That's... that's not possible. No way. 
There's always students walking around no matter what time it is. Why do I feel so alone right now? The sound of a branch snapping carries over from the other side of the path. I quickly turn to face it. There's nothing there. I've been an animal in the bushes. I continue walking down the path. The hair is sticking up on the back of my neck. Everything feels wrong. Come to me. My ears perk up. Who's there? Come to me. Ugh. In a small square of windows adorning the doorway into the theater, red glowing eyes peer down at me. Fuck! I take off in a sprint. Whoever that is, I don't want to know. I have to find people. Where's the UC? Huh? 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 When I come to my senses, I realize I'm somewhere deep in the Bavarian Gardens. How? How could I be here? I didn't even cross the river. The anxiety coursing through my veins has turned into full-blown panic. What the hell's going on? The sound of footsteps echoes behind me. I slowly turn around, terrified of what I'm about to see. Ooh! Yeah, good fucking reason! The figure approaches step by step, though I can barely make out who they are. Fucking creepypasta version of Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Killing Hood. <laughs> what catches my attention is their blood red jacket. Or is that a cloak? The hood completely obscures their face, leaving only those piercing red eyes staring down at me. Come to me. Something shines in their hand. A knife. Get away from me! I turn tail and run as fast as I can. Russell lives in one of, the, one of these apartments here, right? Shit, which one is it? My sprinting, my sprinting legs carry me up the incline out of the gardens. The apartment buildings line up along the river, each standing at least five stories tall. Just like the other buildings, though, there are no lights on. Behind me, I can hear the figure keeping pace with me. Shit, shit, shit! I don't even bother trying to remember which building is Russell's. But please! S somebody! Let me in! Please! I run down the line, pounding on each door in the hopes that someone will come. But they never do. I look over my shoulder and see the figure is gaining on me quickly. F fuck you! I cut my losses and make a break for the Bavarian Bridge. Second, y'all. It is coffee time. All right, y'all, let's jump right back into it. Okay. Huh. Huh. No matter how fast I run, I can't seem to lose them. The wind behind me feels so warm. It's almost like they're breathing down my back. Come to me. Help! Somebody help me! Adrenaline kicks into overdrive, allowing me to channel a running speed I haven't achieved since track and field. I struggle to breathe. This can't be happening. Why can't I figure out where I'm going? If I could find the dorms, I'd be safe. After rounding a corner, I end up, end, up beneath, end up beneath the library in Raymond Field. Huh! Huh! I can't take this! My head feels like it's splitting in two! I fall to my knees and look across the field. Ugh. What the- The moon looms over the tower, emanating a haunting and natural red glow. I feel like I've seen this before. Come to me. I stare transfixed at the moon, unable to move my gaze anywhere else. So Pretty. My feet carry me across the grass, eyes never straying. Yes. I have to reach it. It feels... She's calling me. Jess. Yeesh. My eyes jolt open. What? I barely managed to catch my balance before falling over, quickly looking around to see him standing in an alley between two of the sophomore dorms. How did I... Uh, are you okay? I snap out of my stupor and notice there's a long golf cart parked next to me. The driver looks over at me, concerned. No, not really. He gets out of the cart and approaches me. Oh, Arlos. Ben? I blink several times when I recognize the face beneath the baseball cap. Carlos? What are you doing here? I could ask you the same thing. The sharp pain from my headache was dulled substantially from earlier. Crickets chirp from the nearby bushes. Lights are on the dorm windows surrounding the alley, and a cool night breeze blows past my cheek. I... I don't know. I close my eyes and hold a hand up to my face. I just want to get back to my dorm room. Hmm. 
But what time is it? I dig into my pockets and pull out my phone. No way. It's already ten minutes past midnight, and, and I see I've got three missed calls from... Zack. Ben, get in the cart. I will drive you to the dorm. Huh? I shake off the stupor again and try to figure out what's going on. What are you doing exactly? Huh. I work nights at public safety now, too. It is part of the, it's part of the job program I signed up for. Wow. Two jobs already? His brow froze under the baseball cap. I'm impressed. I'd be able to keep up with your homework. Yeesh, the words coming out of my mouth hardly sound conscious. I'm just taking all I can to not just collapse on the ground right now. That is not important. He gestures for me to follow him. Eh, let me put this thing back on. There we go. Okay, just putting my case back on. Okay. You need to get in the cart, Ben. Y yeah, sorry. I do as he says, not willing to press the topic further. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks for a tip if you can. It always helps. Uh, remember, till next time, I love you all. I'll see you on the next video. Be sure to check out our Patreon, y'all. Bye bye